I'm Roy. Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, are you feeling good, everybody? That was nice. Hey. Yo, 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 this is Adam, a.k.a. Low Cut Connie. We're here at the Sound Unseen Festival in Minneapolis, and I am a co-director of a film called Art Dealers. And I'm Roy Power, and I'm also a co-director of Art Dealers, starring Adam Wiener. Also we were, very handsome. We were just talking about it, but how was last night's performance? The performance? You want me to review my own performance? I do. I'd love to I think cuts. I did an amazing job. <laughs> I think it was absolutely sensational. I was tapping my foot. I was having a great time, you know? The best 20 minutes of my day, I think. Yeah, it was cool, man. It's a great How crowd. Was the screening? The screening was really nice. We had a beautiful crowd. Uh, the place was packed. People were laughing and singing and the whole thing, the whole film. I thought the coolest part of it was you couldn't tell if the crowd noise was from the film or from the people in the theater, which is, you know, that's what we were going for. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. I also had trouble with that. It's just watching the movie and people would cheer and then I'd hear it come in surround sound through the rest of it. And uh, it seems like it was the best crowd yet for this movie. It was nearly sold out. It was a packed house and people were loving it. You could tell they laughed at every joke and they were cheering after every song. I saw some people making out in the crowd. That was, that's, you know you're doing a good job with that. Um, people stayed for a long time afterwards for the um, Q&A and the performance and we were just showing a lot of love and people seemed to really uh, get something out of this film. When did this kind of start? When did you decide, let's cover all of this? All of this. <laughs> Next time I'm going to make a film about you. Ooh. Um, I was doing a road documentary before the pandemic. We did a film festival. Low Cut Connie played a film festival uh, in New Jersey where they were honoring Danny DeVito, one of my favorite actors. And we got to play the after party for Danny DeVito's thing. And it was just an amazing group of people. And um, we played and there was all these filmmakers and producers and film people. And a couple people came up to me immediately and said, somebody's got to do a film about you. This show is just too special. And it started a conversation. Some people started doing a road documentary with me. 2018, 2019. We shot a bunch of stuff. Iowa, Kansas, Minnesota, Pittsburgh. You know, really cool stuff from the road. But then the pandemic ended all that. And um, coming out of the pandemic, I said, you know what I really want to do? I want to do a concert film. I want to do the One Big Night concert film. And if we can capture the magic trick of our show, then maybe we can talk about integrating these other narratives, um, other stories around the band, me, my life, the struggle of being a working artist, health struggles, uh, anti-Semitism, uh, poverty, all the different things that we floated through the film, they could work, but only if the concert film worked, right? You got to have that concert that is just so exciting. And, and so I called my friend Roy. We'd done a bunch of music videos together. He's very talented. And I said, you're the man for the job. You got to say yes. And he did. That's pretty much how it went. I mean, on my end, I'd been talking to Adam for many years from these music videos, and we'd text all the time because I'll watch some concert film I loved, and I'll be like, Adam, have you seen this? Have you seen that? We gotta do this someday. Um, and that kept going on until Adam was finally ready to do it. So I pretty much got the crew together, got everyone ready to go, and we just went for it. How many camera shots do you have of the concert? I love some of the angles and choices y'all had. Can you talk about capturing this whole experience? Because it's not just a regular shot little concert film at all. Right. So what happened was we had about six or seven camera operators. We had a few in the back, a few in the crowd, two of them on stage. And then, no, actually three of them on stage because there was an additional shooter there that we used all of his footage in this. Um, the plan was to have 
these monitors set up and headsets going on so I could be like, all right, Andy, uh, Will is about to do a guitar solo or Murph, you know, move over to this person. But as soon as the concert started, it was so loud and we were so underprepared in that sense that that completely shut off. So I basically just wandered around and dove through the crowd and would whisper to people like make sure you focus on Abigail for this song um, but for the most part everyone knew you know, we work very closely together all the time so they know how I like things to look or how I like things to be shot or we talked through different little things that are in a variety of concert films from Nirvana Live at the Paramount to Stop Making Sense so uh, I think the technical difficulty actually worked well in our favor because it loosened everything up where I would have made it a little little bit too controlling so it's good uh, yeah exactly like there's a lot of concerts that you see shot that there's a choreography about how the cameras move and how the audio works and how the lighting and e each element of the production and you, you know that's part of that is most of the concert films we see are from artists that are at an arena level so what you're seeing is a very uh, high quality capture of a very highly produced show uh, that is not what we were going to do <laughs> um, my show with the band has no script doesn't particularly have a, a clear set list um, there's no choreography there's no uh, X marks the spot it's 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 a magic trick it's a high wire act it is totally improvisational uh, these guys had a vague sense of what was going to happen and it was like trench warfare on stage because these camera operators were right in the zone of all of our movements and what could have been a disaster turned out to be something really beautiful which is that the cameras are moving as we're moving uh, there's moments where we're bumping into the cameras um, and what I like about it, and what I think you achieved very well, is the cameras are not invisible. You're aware watching the film that this was, you know, a, a group of people consciously making a film. You're seeing microphones, you're seeing lights, you're seeing cameras. It's part of the performance, right? And that, I feel like, raises the stakes. I personally like films that acknowledge, on the doc side, on the documentary side, that acknowledge that a documentary is being made. You know, I, want, I, I that little awkwardness of we're not supposed to acknowledge that there's a camera in the room or we're not supposed to acknowledge that there's a microphone and a camera and that people are going to see this. Is, that's not my personal taste when it comes to documentaries. I like that we're aware. And I think there's got to be some intellectual term for that, that somebody smarter than me. Uh, there's that awareness that the piece is being made as it's being made, right? Uh, that's how we went about it, and I think you executed it very well. Thank you. Yeah. I'm curious... Can you talk about the musicians you've brought in over the years to work with you? Because there is a certain way that you work, and I'm curious, what do you look for in your musicians that work with you? Because A, they have to be really freaking talented to keep up with you, but B, they also, like you said, have to be able to adjust. Um, can you talk about the talent you have around you? You've got a good group of people you found. I have an amazing group right now. Who I Once I got this particular group together, I said, it's go time. This is the film group. Um, this group, um, not only are they some of the most talented musicians, but they're some of the most talented performers. Uh, it is a show. Uh, it is not just a concert, right? You're, every one of your senses is being uh, utilized in a performance. Um, I want to create this feeling of unpredictability uh, on stage and in the audience. And this group <clears throat> executes that that kind of unpredictability better than any group I've ever had. Um, but I, I take no credit for that. All I am is the casting director, really. You pick people that show you something special. You put them together. And then you cross your fingers and you hope that there, there's a chemical thing that happens between them and that this three-dimensional magic happens between them. And luckily, this particular group, six, seven people, uh, just had such magic 
um, and each fill a unique role, right? Each has a crucial role and visually, musically, has a unique spot on the stage and in the action that's happening. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm very proud of them. I'm just gonna say their names real quick. Cause Definitely. so in the film we have Addis uh, Clopton on the drums. You got Jere Lewis who does everything. He plays percussion, he sings, he dances, he does gymnastics. I mean, he's just fantastic. You have Linwood Regensburg, the Iceman on the bass. <laughs> You've got the Little Queens, Rocky, uh, Rocky and Bullwin Bullwinkle. That is her name, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Uh, who's just a four foot 11 little powerhouse. And uh, my sister from another mister, uh, Abigail Dempsey, who's just incredible. And Will Donnelly, who's been with me 10 years on the guitar, is such an amazing group. They are a great group. And uh, I think one of the most fun things with, um, when we were editing this with Paul, our editor, Paul Raposo, is, um, you know, the instinct is to keep showing Adam. He's the lead of the band, of course, but it was almost impossible not to go over to other band members, especially Abigail and Rocky, who are just so dynamic and, you know, intense, this whole movie. I think they make the movie. Yeah, and, you know, uh, 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 not every musician likes a camera in their face. Yeah. Uh, in order to be in Low Cut County, you got to love being watched, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so... Um, it's just an amazing group and again what we do is we create a show that's just just not a mu it's not just a musical concert but it's a piece of entertainment and I, I if people have so many options now to be entertained um, I need to give them something that's undeniable that when they buy a ticket leave their house travel whatever they do to get in the room that when they go home, they're gonna say, that was incredible, I wanna do that again. And I have a very short attention span and there's a lot of performances I see that don't reach that level of, of energy and emotion for me. I'm not moved such that I would wanna see it again. I hold myself and the band to that standard that we have to give people something very special that's gonna stick with them long after the show is over. I'm curious, as far as taking this film to places like Sound Unseen in Minneapolis, knowing that this kind of started out as a road film, can you talk about where this film will go and has been and, and how people can, you know, jump on the journey along the way? I mean, it's still a, a work in progress, right? This is the third screening last night uh, publicly, and we want to keep getting this thing into more film festivals and showing it around and one night only events and theaters all through the country. And hopefully the world soon if if that uh, catches on enough the world the world the whole world the whole world did, were, did you even think of that did people in, about the world people in europe could see this europe antarctica oh my god yeah we don't know this is listen talented young filmmaker roy power he he made a fantastic short film called memory video that you should watch but this is your first feature length film yeah yep. not your last um, it's my first film. We've done music videos quite a bit, but this is our first rodeo making a feature length film. So this has all been very exciting for us. We don't know where it's headed. We're looking for people to help us get the film out there in the world next year. We have a bunch of one night only screenings scheduled and to be announced, but I'm really hoping that we can um, get into theaters, get onto a streamer so that people in various territories can see it. I'm used to doing that with my music I know what it is to try to get your record into record stores onto a merch table or into streaming so that people in Argentina can hear your music and say we love you we we just played your song at our wedding Australia Asia wherever you know so I'm hoping that we can do the same with the film because I'm blown away by the reaction to the film and that people who don't know anything about me or the band love the film and they find something to love about it they're excited they laugh they cry whatever it is so i'm hoping we could just get more people to see it was art dealers always the title i don't remember i think yeah 
I think we just kind of had it. You know, Adam had the album coming out, and uh, he's like, I think it'll be called Art Dealers. And then I just assumed that would be the movie name all along. And uh, one nerdy fact about it, or dorky thing, is like, I'm happy it's not called Low Cut Connie Art Dealers. Like, I like that it's just Art Dealers. Um, a lot of concert films, you scroll through, and it says the name of the band first and then the title, but this is so much punchier. Art Dealers. When you see a film like Stop Making Sense, uh, it's yes, it's it's a Talking Heads film, but it's it's its own piece of work. You don't necessarily have to be the biggest Talking Heads fan or know their records, or have seen them on tour to love that film. That's sort of what we were shooting for here—that it would be a piece of work that would stand on its own. Uh, as I mentioned last night, there were a bunch of films that I was thinking about when we were making it that weren't concert films. Um, Paris is Burning is one of my favorite films. It's a film about drag ball performers in Harlem in the 80s when AIDS is really ravaging that community. And it's about art, but it's about um, a community around art and how they live. Love that film. American Movie is one of our favorite films. Um, Great doc. Wow. Uh, which, again, is about make you know the world of making art you know um crumb is another of my favorite documentaries again it's about comic books but it's really about his life and the, the, the resonance of his art all these different films that um it, there's a bunch of films by les blank that we've talked about that i love a lot of music films always for pleasure about mardi gras and so uh, we just hoped and i i certainly wanted to make a film that certainly wasn't just for my fans, but that would be a piece of work that would stand on its own beyond the band, you know? So Art Dealers just seemed like the right title. It really speaks to a, a lot of aspects of the film, but especially the people that are in the film. You guys started with music videos. You've now made this wonderful doc. Are y'all going to continue to collaborate? Is there any other projects or ideas you have on coming down the line we don't like each other that much is the problem <laughs> like i'm just sort of just making it through this interview yeah but i don't know how you feel about this i mean uh, he's very talented but an insufferable person he, he says in the movie i'm boring well he literally might be the most boring person of all time that being said you know i think i can get over that i'd love to work with you again adam uh on on whatever it is we'll discuss it to be discussed. <laughs> Lastly, I'd, I'd love to, to talk about adding the performance element to this experience, not just after the show, but we're going to get a DJ set from you here tonight. How much fun is it to go to a place and kind of immerse yourself in all levels? I love it. Uh, a couple years ago, I had a revelation that was I was leaving the music business and entering into the entertainment business. As much as I live and breathe music, I don't particularly love the music business. It's not a nice place to work. It's a pain in the ass, to be honest with you. Um, just like uh, maybe some people who live and breathe film might not love everything about the film industry or television industry or whatever, right? I love entertaining, I love art, especially performing art. And that could be anything from doing a radio broadcast, being on stage, making a film, making a music video, recording an album, writing an article, whatever it is. It, to, to me, it's all another day in my life of being an artist and exploring and creating things. And so when I get to do something like this, this weekend here in Minneapolis, where I get to showcase a film, sing, DJ, it's, it's really fun. Well, Adam, us at Unsound and, and everyone here in Minneapolis really appreciate you bringing this here and bringing this wacky guy here with this wonderful film. Um, thank you. Hey, I appreciate you guys. You guys uh, had the good sense and good taste to have our film, but I got to congratulate you. This group of films that you had at this festival are all fantastic. All things that I would want to see as a, as a music and film lover. Uh, I would seek all these films out. I think they're all fantastic, and it was just nice to be included. 
couldn't have said it better myself. I agree with everything Adam just said. You know, we'd have had a great time here, spent about two days, but uh, it's, it's a blast. I'm, I'm, I hope to come back someday. Mazel tov. Mazel tov.